Characters can make or break games. Depending on the type of game you're making, a good character can be the main reason players choose to play it and consume its content. And this is especially true for action games. In this dev vlog, we'll take a look at how I built my character for my upcoming action roguelike warden as well. We'll discuss the design of the character, we'll see how I implemented its different interacting systems, and then we'll talk about balance and polish for a third person game and the small things you can do that'll get you that feel juice. So without further ado, let's start with the design. A well-designed third-person character is a character that looks good, feels nice and smooth to control, and that supports the fantasy of your game through actions, animations, and visual and sound effects. For the feeling nice and smooth to control, there is first, having simple and intuitive controls, and second, good movement mechanics. I kept movement simple in my game. My character doesn't jump, which removes a lot of complexity, but still, the animations depend on the weapon the character is holding, so I do have different blend spaces for the different weapon categories. My actions, on the other hand, aren't so simple. First, the weapons. There are many different ones that the player can loot, each with different and random combos, special attacks and ultimates, and each with different sizes, ranges and damage capabilities. While basic combo attacks are hit-based and need the weapon to collide with the enemy character to apply damage, special attacks and ultimates are area of effect based and can deal damage to surrounding enemies or faraway enemies depending on the weapon. The weapons can also have elements that apply status effect to enemies. Water slows them down, fire does damage over time, thunder stuns them, etc. This weapon system design gives the player the choice and possibility to play different ways. And since each weapon requires a different timing and positioning to be used correctly, it also helps keeping the player challenged when trying out new weapons during different runs. Second, the player has different skills that he can acquire to complement his weapons. There are skills that are similar to the weapon's ultimates and damage enemies with an area of effect around the player or in front of him, and there are skills that fire different types of projectiles. Skills give the player a nice way to balance the different weapons he chooses to use. A slow and heavy long-range weapon can be balanced by using a fast skill, like the energy balls, while fast and light, short-range weapons can be balanced with a slow area of effect skill. Third are the different potions that the player can consume. Some are instant and apply their effect once, like healing potions and mana refills, and there are some that apply effects for a duration, like potions that buff the player damage or defense, potions that increase attack speed, and even potions that can make the player invisible or invincible for a very short period of time. Potions are there as a resource for the player to manage and try to time well. Used strategically before or during a fight, they can be the difference between winning or losing. The player can only have one potion equipped at any time, but can have other potions in the inventory. And fourth, we have the perks. They apply passive effects to the character and can alter stats, but can also affect the weapons, skills, and potions. Some basic ones will just increase or lower stats like damage, defense, movement speed, attack speed, etc. And some more exotic ones can change the way some player actions behave like having the character damage the enemies with the evade move, having the projectiles not explode after hitting their first target, etc. Perks give the game a character building aspect that is essential in a roguelike. The player can only equip a limited number of perks and has to choose the right combinations and synergies between the weapon, skills and potions that are equipped. With these four pillars, the player is challenged to think about the short-term strategy with the weapons and skills combat, about the mid-term strategy with potion management, and about the long-term strategy with the perks and the character build. I think these are simple yet deep enough moment-to-moment -moment gameplay elements for a roguelike. They should keep the game feeling different and fresh from one run to the other, keep the player engaged and wanting to try different builds, and also wishing for more luck and better loot drops in the next run. And now that you know about the game's character design, I am sure you cannot wait to get your hands on it and play it, so head over to the Steam link in the description and wishlist it. And if you are not willing to play it, well, I have a great idea. You can head over to Steam, wishlist it as well, and not buy it when it comes out. How's that sound? Good? Great. I have implemented all the actions and abilities in my game using the gameplay ability system and animation montage when the ability is animated. The different character actions are represented by items that are parsed, managed, and loaded using Unreal's Asset Manager. Each item grants the player one or multiple gameplay abilities. These gameplay abilities apply gameplay effects to either the player or the enemies depending on the ability. Each gameplay effect can alter stats, apply tags, and even grant an ability as well. 
and depending on the gameplay effect being applied, a gameplay cue can be triggered if the gameplay effect requires a visual representation, like status effect particles for the enemies and potion duration visual effects for the player. Weapons grant four different random combat abilities from a pool of possible abilities based on the weapon category. The first and most complex ability is the weapon combo. It's an ability that plays an animation montage, and if the weapon hits an enemy during specific time frames defined using notify states in the animation montage, the gameplay effect corresponding to the notify is applied on the target. A specific section of the montage is played based on where the player is in the combo, and I can in the animation montage specify when my weapon should do damage and what effect to apply based on the animation itself. The three other weapon abilities are the special attacks. The heavy attack is triggered by holding the attack button, the evade attack by attacking right after evading, and the weapon ultimate is triggered with the specific button but only when it's charged. The heavy and evade attacks will also play an animation montage and trigger the effect based on the notifies in the montage. They can either be hit based attacks like the weapon combos or be area of effect based and damage enemies in specific areas around the player. Weapon ultimates, on the other hand, are only area of effect abilities and can trigger one or multiple effects on the enemies depending on the weapon and its ultimate. Skills work in similar way to weapon ultimates. When activated, they play an animation montage and, depending on the skill and its animation, can either apply the area of effect right away or spawn a projectile that will apply the effect to a target if it hits a target. Projectiles are implemented as blueprints that can be configured for different projectile types. They can have different sizes, speeds, lifespans, and can be subject to gravity or not. A projectile, when spawned, is initialized with the gameplay effect it should apply to its target, based on the skill that spawned it. Potions are consumables that, when used, also play a small animation that can be different from one potion to the other. At a specific moment in the animation, the ability is committed, the potion is consumed, and the effect is applied. This allows for animation cancelling. When the player doesn't want to use the potion anymore, the action can be cancelled if the animation hasn't yet reached the commit notify. This also makes consuming a potion an action that is not instant, so the player needs to take that into consideration when using it. Potions can either affect player stats, like instant or overtime heals, limited duration damage or defense buffs, or they can apply a gameplay tag to the player that affects the gameplay, like an invisibility tag that will make the character invisible to the enemies or a damage immune tag that will make the player invincible. And finally, perks are basically an auto-activating ability that directly apply a gameplay effect when equipped. These are permanent gameplay effects and act in a similar manner to the potion effects. They can alter some of the player stats or they can add tags to the player that add or change a gameplay mechanic. There are for example perks that alter the skill projectiles, perks that synergize with weapon elements, and perks that can extend the potion durations. All these systems interact together using gameplay tags. These are a very simple and powerful tool to organize your gameplay actions. For example, the character evade ability has in its montage a notify to do damage to the enemies, but the damage effect is conditional and will only apply if the player has the corresponding tag. A skill projectile will explode on hit, unless the player has the tag that says otherwise. To understand the power of gameplay tags, let's take a look at a concrete example. My character cannot attack if he's already attacking, right? I manage that by checking if the player has a specific tag when wanting to attack. If the tag is already there, it means that the player is already attacking, so he cannot attack again. And if the tag isn't there, the character can attack, and the tag is added for the duration of the attack animation. Removing this tag made it possible to attack again even if the previous animation isn't finished. And since I have jump attacks, I can chain them now. And apparently, I can fly. So this is how powerful gameplay tags are. They can make your character fly, even if you haven't designed or implemented it. How powerful is that? Gameplay tags can also be used to trigger what is called gameplay cues. Gameplay cues are very useful for managing the gameplay effects visual and sound representations especially when these effects are generic and can be applied to any character in the game. They are managed in a specific window called the Gameplay Queue Editor. In this tool, you can create your Gameplay Queue tags, which should all start with Gameplay Queue dot. And then you can create the handlers for these Gameplay Queue tags, which are blueprints that derive from Gameplay Queue Notify Static or Gameplay Queue Notify Actor, depending on whether your queue is a one-shot effect or if it has a duration. 
In these blueprint handlers, you can execute whatever logic you want for when the gameplay tag is added and removed. You can then specify the gameplay queue tag in your gameplay effect. And that's it. The gameplay queue will trigger automatically when the effect is applied and the tag is added to the actor. Keep in mind that gameplay queues are considered unreliable and should only be used for visual and sound effects and shouldn't be used for gameplay actions. And that's it for the implementation. To summarize, each player ability works in up to five steps. First, the player triggers the ability, which plays an animation montage. Second, the animation montage notifies when the ability effect should apply. Third, the gameplay effect is applied to the player or the enemy. Fourth, if applicable, the effect adds a gameplay tag to its target. And last, also if applicable, the gameplay tag triggers a gameplay cue with the effects, sounds and particles. And there is also one optional additional step that can have a major impact and that doesn't take much effort, and that is hitting that like button. So if you are enjoying this video, please take a second to smash that like button, and if it's not yet the case, hit that subscribe button as well as that notify bell, so that I can wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning with a notification to tell you, hey, my dev vlog is out. How's that sound? Great, right? So with the character abilities designed and implemented, I moved on to the last step, balance and polish. Balance as always requires playtesting, a lot of playtesting. Different abilities are balanced in different ways. Weapons and skills will require tweaking the damage number, the cooldowns and the mana cost for each of the abilities and the ultimate charge time for the weapon. Potions and perks on the other hand require the tweaking of stat percentages, stacking and durations for some of the potions. A small tip to avoid unpredictable behaviors when dealing with stat percentages is to cap the risky values. For example, the attack speed of the character can never exceed 150%. This is done using specific functions in the gameplay ability system that trigger every time a stat is changed. We can use these functions to check the new value against our minimum and maximum values and cap it if necessary. And for the polish, well, as usual, I've used the animation sequences in a montage to play my sounds and visual effects for each of the player abilities. The weapons, skills and potions all trigger specific sounds and particle effects at specific moments in their animations. These range from weapon whooshes, impact sounds, character effort sounds, to trail and area of effect particles for combat visibility. The weapon's trail effect are different based on the weapon elements, and I've implemented that in my character blueprint to change the element effect. There's also a particle effect that triggers when the next attack in the weapon combo can be chained, and this also depends on the weapon element, and also a big part of the combat polish happens on the enemies directly, in the knockback and hit effects. These contribute greatly to the feeling of combat and must not be overlooked. But this is all we have time for today, so... That's it guys for this devlog, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you've learned some things along the way. If that's the case, please hit that like button, it helps the channel a lot. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing if you're interested in game dev and game design. In the next devlog, we'll be taking another shot at procedural dungeon generation. We will be exploring dungeon gameplay elements, dungeon decorations and also dungeon themes and variety. So stay tuned. And as always, my name is Anis, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.